Hi, hello everyone. This is IMK 209 Physical Properties of Food and uh, in this presentation I'll be uh, discussing about the physical state of foods. In the previous uh, presentation, uh, you can check the link in the description uh, below the video here, uh, I discussed about the structure of amorphous and uh, crystalline food and we I compared the properties of amorphous and crystalline. So basically in crystalline uh, material, the molecules are properly arranged in the specific pattern and specific order. And uh, whereas in the amorphous material, the molecules are randomly uh, distributed or it's not like, uh, you know, there's a specific pattern or regular ordered uh, arrangement of molecules in the amorphous material. So therefore the structure of amorphous material is more open uh, or perhaps uh, loosely uh, not very dense compared to the crystalline uh, material. So the word amorphous uh, here, um, we in the, in the literature also we use the term uh, a glass. So amorphous material is, is actually in a glassy uh, in a glassy state. In fact, the the glass window is actually in an amorphous state. So maybe you know here we borrow the term glass here to mean that any material in an amorphous uh, in an amorphous state is also a glass uh, or glassy uh, material. And um, the amorphous material actually form under non-equilibrium uh, conditions and this is the normal condition that we use in the in the food uh, operation or in the food processing. For example, we use rapid drying. So when we dry the, the liquid milk using the spray drying process, so that will also um, produce the milk powder in the form of uh, amorphous powder. And we can use uh, rapid supercooling from milk, example is when we uh, uh, cool down the melted uh, sucrose to form the uh, cotton candy product, which is also in an amorphous glassy state. Can use frying. So when we when we fry the prawn crackers, remember we put in hot oil, it will expand, and then when we cool it down, it will uh, form amorphous glassy material, which is uh, brittle and, and crispy. And uh, we can use process like extrusion cooking also to produce a snack, uh, expanded snack food, which is also in a glassy state. So one of the uh, important property of amorphous material is the viscosity. It has a very extremely high viscosity above 10 to the 12 pascal second. That is a very high uh, viscosity. And uh, the amorphous material also is also known as a uh, metastable, uh, as opposed to crystalline material, which which is actually in the uh, in the equilibrium state or thermodynamically in equilibrium, but amorphous material is actually in metastable state. Metastable state, a uh, material in metastable state appears stable to our eyes, but actually over a long term. Uh, the, the structure, the molecules, and the amorphous material uh, actually will undergo uh, some changes, but this will take a very long, long time uh, to see any changes, physical or chemical changes, on the food. One of very important uh, property for any amorphous and glassy material is what we call as glass transition temperature, or TG. We use a notation Tg to denote glass transition temperature. And Tg is actually a specific property of amorphous uh, glassy uh, material. It's not for crystalline, but it is for uh, amorphous material. So we know that um, in glassy material, it has a very high viscosity in the order of 10 to the power uh, 12 pascal second. So with uh, such high viscosity, we can imagine that the molecules cannot move freely. It cannot, you know, um, 
move from one point to another point. So uh, because of the limited movement of the molecules in glassy material, so the any physical and chemical changes that is dependent on the fusion or, or the mobility of the molecules will be also highly limited. And that will give a kind of stability to amorphous uh, glassy material because of the high viscosity of the glassy state. So, in order to understand more about the um, transformation or the transitions from one state to another state, so we have a diagram here. This is the um, the physical state of uh, material or any food material in this case. So we start here with the uh, food in the in the glassy amorphous state. So in this uh, in this state. The food has very high viscosity. In the previous slide, we mentioned the value above 10 to the 12 pascal second. The, in this uh, condition, the mobility of the molecules are very, very uh, limited. The diffusion of the molecule is also very limited. So what happens now? Um, okay, at this, uh, In this situation, the glass material will have its own uh, unique glass transition or TG. And now, um, when let's say we uh, supply heat or we heat the glass uh, material, and now the the temperature, uh, let's say T, the heating temperature, is higher than the the Tg of the material. So what happened here is when the T is higher than the Tg of the material, it will transform to another state what we call as a rubbery state. In a rubbery state, as the name implies, the material is more uh, flexible. Uh, the molecule in the rubbery state can move around and there will be, there'll be a diffusion of solutes in the, in the material in the rubbery state. So now, um, what happens here? Uh, the viscosity when uh, at this point will reduce uh, significantly to around 10 to the uh, 7 or 10 to the 8 uh, pascal second. So in the order of 3 to 4 magnitudes of reduction in the viscosity and that will allow movement or the mobility of the molecules in the rubbery state. And if we uh, provide sufficient time for this rubbery mat uh, the material in the rubbery state, uh, we can uh, allow some chemical and physical reaction to occur so in in, uh, in this case, the rubbery material can now transform into a crystalline state. So now we can get a crystal. So the formation of crystal is actually an exothermic process. We can observe this in the DSC as an exothermic peak. What happens now uh, in the crystal? The crystal would have also its own um, what. Uh, its own what we call as a melting point or we give a notation TM. Now if we hit, let's say we hit this uh, crystal at T and the temperature is raised above the TM, above the melting point of the crystal, the crystal will start to melt. And this is what happened now, the melting of the crystal will form a melt. And this process is actually an endothermic because we have to supply heat to raise the temperature above the melting point. So now we have a liquid melt here, and uh, we can also uh, reverse this uh, this process. If we now cool it down and we, we apply uh, a slow cooling rate, the melt can transform back into a crystalline state. But what happens if we cool it down very fast? If we cool it down, if we cool it down very fast, the, the very rapid cooling, instead of crystalline, um, the melt will form a glass, uh, um, glass amorphous uh, material. So this is basically in a nutshell, the different physical state the food can uh, undergo during processing uh, based on the temperature uh, of the system. So the critical temperature here that we need to understand is the glass transition. We can have a situation where we raise the temperature of the processing or the storage above the TG, so we get a transformation from glassy to rubbery, or we can also get a situation of 
when we reduce the temperature below the Tg of the material, and in this case, we can um, transform the material into a glassy state. We can um, actually plot uh, a diagram or a graph here. On the y axis, we have uh, temperature here, and the x axis, we have the solid concentration. And this particular graph is called uh, a state uh, diagram. Uh, I will talk about state diagram in the next uh, presentation. So we can actually get uh, a curve. In this case, this, this TG curve, the blue line here, uh, at different uh, combination of temperature and solute concentration or the concentration of water in the system. And any point below this line, any point below this blue line, the material is in the glassy state. So the properties of the material in a glassy state is uh, you know, it is crispy, it is brittle, fragile, it has high viscosity, and because of the mobility and the diffusion rate is very, very slow, because of the high viscosity, uh, any physical and chemical reaction also will have very, very slow reaction time. And therefore, you know, that will provide stability, the shelf stability of the material. And material in the glassy state also have a high modulus. Any point on above the blue line, the material will transform into rubbery state. In the rubbery state, the, uh, the viscosity is much lower, uh, you know, around 10 to the 7 or 10 to the 8 pascal second compared to in the glassy state. And uh, this will allow uh, some mobility to the molecules because there is some free vol volume in the system. And uh, the, the, pro the material in the rubbery state will be softer, will be more flexible, has lower modulus, has lower viscosity, and now, because of the mobility, it will allow some, you know, reaction, physical and chemical reactions, such as oxidation, enzymatic uh, browning, um, and, 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 you know, uh, probably also uh, crystallization, uh, the physical changes that can happen in the rubbery state. So let's look at uh, some example which uh, I have explained in the previous lecture as well. Uh, we have uh, crystal uh, sugar here. Uh, and we have, uh, so from the crystalline sucrose here, we put in this uh, machine, uh, this actually, uh, so the, the sucrose is melted into a liquid melt, and then it will, uh, you know, spin, uh, so we have the, 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 sp the, the spinner here, and it will spin out the melted sucrose at very high speed, uh, and this, you know, will come out as a very uh, thin strand, and it will come in contact with the cool, cool air, and uh, it will dry up very, very fast. And because of very fast uh, drying time, there's not enough time for crystallization to occur here. And we can get amorphous sugar uh, to form here, which is basically the cotton uh, candy, uh, which is uh, you know very popular among the children. And uh, another example here, we have corn grits here, which is actually uh, hot. Uh, and also in the glassy state. And uh, we use this uh, to produce a product through a process called extrusion. So we have this machine is called extruder. So we put, we put the corn grit uh, into this extruder. It will be mixed with a screw inside and we add water. Um, then uh, 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 inside the extruder, we have very high uh, pressure here inside the barrel here. So when it come out to the atmospheric pressure at the end here, it will expand. So this uh, we can cut uh, into section and we get this expanded uh, dry product which is also in amorphous glassy state. So what happened here is actually the transformation from glassy to rubbery inside the extruder and will come out in dry from glass from rubbery to a glassy state again. And uh, what happened here is you know the corn grid will have its own uh, unique TG. So when we put it in, in this extruder and we add some water. Water will depress the TG and also the high temperature of the extruder. So we have now a situation of T of the extruder is higher than the TG. So it will transform into a rubbery state. Then when it come out, it dry out and when, when during the drying, the, the water will evaporate and that will raise the TG, raise the TG high enough and now we have the room temperature now 
below the TG because we raise it above the room temperature and it will form a glassy state. And the final example in this uh, presentation, uh, we have uh, a dry spaghetti here which is also in the glassy state. It is hard and brittle so of course it will have its own TG. And now we put it in the hot boiling water then the temperature of this boiling water is much higher than the TG so now we have a situation of T above the TG again so it becomes softer and finally it turn into a rubbery state which is the spaghetti in the form that we normally eat so basically um, that is this um, end of this presentation so what we have learned in this presentation is the uh, physical state of different material and uh, depending on the temperature of the processing or the temperature of the storage we can always manipulate the process so that we can have the situation where T is above the TG or T is below the TG so this is where we can get the transformation from glassy to rubbery, rubbery to glassy or rubbery to a crystalline state or the crystalline into melt and melt we can rapidly cool down to form the uh, glassy material again Thank you very much for your uh, for for listening, and uh, we, um, we, uh, we will we will meet again in the next presentation on the state uh, diagram.